Anyway, clean off your your threaded body here. Use an old toothbrush. These threads are vitally important to the life of these coilovers. You screw them up, and you'll have to send them off to get rebuilt, if they're even rebuildable. So you want to make sure they're nice and clean before you turn these nuts. Okay. First off, let's talk about what we got here. These upper two nuts are the uh, <clears throat> preload on the spring. That's what they said. So what you want to have is you want to have this spring where you can just turn it and it's nice and tight. There shouldn't be any, any play in there, but you should be able to turn it. And if this ever gets loose, what you want to do is loosen the bottom nut, run the top nut all the way up, snug it. You may want to give it a turn, half a turn, just to get it to where this doesn't have any play in it whatsoever, but you can still turn it a little bit. Now once that's set, you really don't want to mess with these. So you want to get that bottom nut tightened all the way up on that top nut. That, the bottom nut is just a lock nut to lock the top one into place. But our right height is set down here on this bottom nut. So you got your, your friends here, the spanner wrenches. So if we want to loosen this, It's not wanting to cooperate with me, so you can use your persuader. It'll be easy here, but just tap it just a little bit. See it turn a little bit. There you go. See now it's it's loose. I can turn it by hand. Okay. Now this bottom part down here should be threaded as well. And this part threads into this, and this is just the lock nut to keep it in place. So what you want to do is run this up, especially if you're wanting to move the tire and everything up. And now you turn this by using these nuts. Now you go up with one nut, down with the other nut, I'll let you figure that out. What you want to do is not, not loosen this bottom nut. I suppose you could use the top nut if it's good and tight. But you want to go up and down with that. And that's how you make your adjustments. Um, for your ride height at any particular corner. Now when you're doing these corner weights you probably just want to work with one corner at a time um, just moving it up and down you'll make a little change put the tire back on take your weight probably take the tire back off because things won't be right you'll have to make another change but generally you can just work with one corner to get everything right once you determine which corner you want to work with. So you may ask yourself, how many times do I need to turn this to move however much weight? Well, there's not really a formula, especially when you consider different cars and different spring rates. If you're running a high spring rate, a little bit of up and down here will mean a whole lot on your weights. But if your spring rates aren't that high, uh, you know, stock, stock-like spring rates, you can move probably quite a bit and not move anything. So your spring rates really matter. High spring rates, little changes. Uh, lower spring rates, bigger changes to get the equivalent of weight change on our scales. That's, that's really all there is to it. But like I say, over the course of the lifetime of these pour lovers, you're really going to watch these nuts. Make sure they don't come loose on you. If they do, you got to get in here and check, make sure your, your uh, preload on your spring hasn't changed. And uh, just keep a check on your ride height. If this never comes loose, your ride height should be fine. That's, that's it. That's all there is to it. A couple simple concepts you need to realize when you're doing this stuff. Um, you've got four, these are very simple equations. Uh, the front weight will be a constant, the rear weight will be a constant, the right side and left side weights are all constants. You can't change that. The total of these, total of these, total here and total here will always be the same. Now for most cars, most front engine cars, um, this, your front, will obviously be more than the rear. The rear is going to be less. And decent cars, left to right, they'll be almost equal. 
or close. A lot closer than the front to rear. The front to rear is going to vary a whole lot more. <coughs> so, so we, once you get that down, you need to know if I lower a corner, what happens? If you lower the front left, it will decrease the amount of weight on this and this tire and will increase the amount of weight on these two tires. So by lowering this tire you increase this weight and decrease this weight. That's the basic concept. Um, there's no real other way around it as long as we're just working with these coilovers. You basically raise or lower one corner and the way I determine that is, you know, you want to make a change, go around the car and see which wheel gap, you know, or ride height on the car needs an adjustment and work with that one. But that's basically all you can do. You raise or lower one corner. If you lower the corner, it lowers uh, the amount of weight on that wheel and its opposite wheel and increases the amount of weight on the other two wheels. That's about it.